Alright guys, we're gonna watch my fight versus Albert Bell. I haven't watched this fight in a while. It's actually pretty cool. I'm actually watching with you guys. This this was my first defeat. This was my first loss. So it's, it's a pretty important fight that I'm gonna look back at right now. And yeah, you know, fighting at the MGM Grand. Uh, Tyson Fury undercard. It was like, this is a big deal. You know, at the MGM Grand, I was like, man, some of the best fighters fought here. Oscar La Hoya, uh, Tito Trinidad, Bernard Hopkins. Like, all the fighters in history I fought at the MGM Grand. I was like, damn, like, here I'm going to fight, like, another undefeated fighter, depending my title. Um, I was promised that after this fight, I was going to fight for a world title. So, it was a big deal. Uh, but I knew I was fighting a guy who was so much taller and had a different style that I hadn't faced in a while. But um, let's check it out. This is the fight. No hands shook. <laughs> Didn't even look at each other. Like it was just. There's a lot of tension just because we were both undefeated. So I right away started sticking my jab. I wasn't really trying to land my jab. I was just trying to see where he was at. I was built with slick. He was one of the slickest fighters I fought. He was very hard to hit. But I was just trying to touch his chest, trying to touch something. But I noticed he had a very quick reaction. And him being so tall, it was tough. See, I was touching the jabs to the chest. Any any moment I got, I was just trying to touch his chest because I wanted to try. To, I wasn't trying to reach for his face because he was so tall. I knew I wasn't gonna land in his face. Stab down, right hand down. Yep, and the fight, the first round was pretty even right now. So far, it's even. I felt I was putting the pressure. Obviously, initiating the action, so I, I felt it was in control. Looking at the fight so far. Steps to the stomach. A lot of jabs to the stomach was key, him being so tall. I think the first round is always like a feel out round of jabs and you're trying to find your distance, trying to find your range and whatnot. But I felt I was winning this first round, looking at it right now. I feel I was initiating, I was, I was throwing more punches, more jabs. And just even hearing back at the fight, I, was, I, I didn't agree too much with the commentators as far as what they thought the first round was. Here we go, we're just second round. And what's a deception too is Albert Bell likes to have his hand low, so it looks like you can hit him over the top, but he's shooting his jab from, from down below. Um, I like to do that too, but since he's taller than me, it's going to obviously work out with him. Albert Bell still undefeated at this moment, and he hasn't been being. He's a slick fighter. He's slick. Doesn't have too much power, though. Um, doesn't have power. I just feel he has very good timing. His timing is really good. Yeah, Albert Bell did hug a lot on the inside, though. He was pretty good at that. My defense was pretty good too up until this point. I wasn't really getting hit all crazy. It was just a matter of us, whoever was landing first. See, there's a shot I landed. Jab to the stomach. I wasn't getting hit, I was doing good. I, th I think I was in control a lot for this fight. That's a good punch he landed. I did think Bell should have landed more jabs. But both landed there. I was stalking though. I was on him. I was on him. Jab to the stomach. I was constantly touching Bell. Bell was a he was a good fighter. I just feel I don't know. I feel he caught me one round. He had a good round later on in the fight, but we're gonna see it right now. But up until this point I didn't feel he was beating me. Especially me being the champion, I just feel I was winning these rounds. But uh, he did have very good timing. He was hard to hit. But I was playing the smart. I was listening to my coach, touching to the body, and just making sure to uh, 
Not let him land too clean. Uh, Angel Cordon is one hell of a coach. He got me ready in tip-top shape for this fight. So I felt fine. Every round I felt fine. Now you got to see there's a lot of things going on in the fight. Like even leading into the fight before the fight. You know, you're, you guys are fighting on TV. You're fighting with Tyson Fury's undercard. MG and Grant. Like, hey, there's a lot of pressure we deal with as fighters. But it's normal. But it's just, um, it's just looking back. You're like, damn. Like, you know. Hands free, ref was saying hands free, but yeah. I guess for my title, the fights are 10 rounds, so that's the reason why this fight was 10 rounds and it was scheduled for 10 rounds. Dude, the jabs to the stomach were working though. They were landing all day. That was a nice shot, Bella, and a double hook. Ooh, another hook landed. That was a good hook. Yep. At some point, you gotta take a risk. You know, you could, you could, you could fight your way and just box, but at some point, you gotta test waters. A headbutt. I think that was a little exaggeration. Like, goddamn, like, the fuck? Like, all right, you gotta hit the head, but damn, bro. What were you thinking right here? Like, did they hurt you at all? Nah, nah, I was cool. I was fine. I was just trying to figure out what the hell happened to him, why he was making a big deal about it. I mean, I've been headbutted in my fights. After this fight, I've been headbutted a lot. I never acted like that, I never complained like that, but, um, some people are smart. Some some of these things are tactics to get a break, get your air back, like, you know, especially if you need it. See, look, doctor, it's too much. It's like, that even pisses me off. Like, come on, bro, like, you can see, right? So it's all good, like, see, you're good, dude. Come on, like, it's a fight. Things happen. And I was just coming in to fight. It wasn't intentional. It was totally accidental. Ooh, right hand. Fuck. See, I was hitting him even when he was hugging. I was trying to work out of there. I felt it was onto something. I felt momentum. I did feel momentum in the fight. And I felt I won that round. I felt I won that round. I think he won the second round. I haven't won in the second round, but as far as the first and the third, I felt I was winning those rounds. The good thing about Albert Bell that he had too was I noticed he was very calm, like expression-wise in his face, he was very like poker face, like he would show the same face. He wouldn't show any fatigueness or exhaustion, he was just like the same, just like. See the hugging, the hugging was bugging me. He was good moving on his feet. If you guys notice, I was constantly having to adjust myself. But if you look at the fight, it's me stalking again, me stalking again. I'm trying to find him, I'm trying to find him. Like you gotta see, without me going forward, there is no fight. It's just us kind of looking at each other. So I was trying to obviously initiate the fight, go forward. Um, Because after these fights, I believe Albert Bell did have fights and they were like super boring. And that's even why uh, Top Rank stopped putting him on TV. Because he was boring and then I heard they let him go off Top Rank because they didn't want to like promote him anymore. So it's crazy. Styles make fights so I just feel um, I was the one initiating the action and making it happen. Oh, right hand, see? And then he goes hugging. Yeah. Hey, but it's a tactic. Hugging is a tactic in boxing. You're able to use it. You can do it. But I think excessively, it's kind of like the referee should have did his job. Kind of warned him. 
Yeah, we had always practiced jabbing at the stomach and then trying to go over the top. Like, yeah, that, that was kind of like our main thing was obviously touching down and then sometimes going over. Got me there. Got me there again. Yeah, I feel this round Bell was winning this round. So far. But thank me coming back. <laughs> Another right hand. Oh, that was sick. Hey, I don't know. That's a pretty even round, though, too. I mean, I don't know who to score for. I'm not a judge. But I guess it depends who you favor as the judge. Who do you like? Do you like the guy going forward? Do you like the guy moving? And what were you thinking here? Like... Nah, I was just wondering why, why they were taking the break. Um, later in the fight, a lot of other things happened. I was kind of like, what? It's just like, yeah. Because when we were talking with the referee in the back room, we did tell him that he did like to hold, and we did tell him, like, hey, watch out. Like, um, we just didn't want any momentum being taken away from us from breaks and stuff. But uh, later on in the fight, some things happened that kind of kind of made me mad later looking back. I think this round's around to get hurt. This round or the next, I forget. But see, hey, I'm just, he's moving his head. I'm just firing away. It's like, we don't have control over the person who's ducking down or whatever. Yeah, he had a little pepper jab. It wasn't really like a jab jab. It was like a little pepper jab. It was crazy. But with the eight ounce glove, it doesn't matter how hard you hit. As long as that glove is like kind of throwing, like you're gonna feel something. Yeah, a little pepper jab. There it is, that pepper jab. Yeah, a little pepper jab. Throw me off. See, look, I was trying to get inside, but I noticed every time I would get inside, he would tie me up. So then, look, see, watch. See? Then he would find a way to like tie me up or tangle up. Like I knew I had to get inside and I knew I had to work, but what was frustrating was I was getting tied up. So then I was trying to fight like in the mid range, not so close. Because I was like, well, every time I get close, it's going to get a break. Um. Oh, that was a good right hand landing. Another right hand landing. See here, I'm trying to go inside again. Look, see, and then something happened, see? See, too tangled up. It was like, I knew I had to get inside, but at the same time, I was like, damn, bro, he's not letting me work. So it was kind of frustrating. Here we go again, look. Oh, that's a nice left hook. Yeah, I thought I was winning the fight so far, but <laughs> I think this is the round. This is the round I got hurt in. Yeah, it definitely has some momentum, though. I was on it. Coming into this round, like, when you're in the corner, you're thinking, like, all right, I'm up, or you're not even thinking that? Nah, nah, I'm just thinking about doing more. You're not even thinking about who's winning. Because even though I knew, I knew probably I was winning, I knew that like it's not enough. You want to make it clear, like more clear. Especially when I was fighting someone who was undefeated, I was like, shit, I don't know who, who they're trying to favor here. But I definitely knew I wasn't landing and doing what I should and that I needed to do more, for sure. I think this is wrong. I got, I got hurt in. I remember exactly how it happened, too. There it is. He's all stepping back too tall, and he caught me with a jab. And it wasn't even that it was a hard jab, it's just it caught me going back. But yeah, I was definitely, I was definitely rocked. Um, if anyone's wondering how it feels, when you have a... If you ever drink a lot, you get super buzzed where you're like, 
walking around like that, that's exactly how you feel like when you get hit with a shot. You feel like you're just buzzing from home. Which is why a lot of us fighters, we laugh when we get hit. We're like, oh shit, because it feels the same way. But I was fighting on instinct. I was fighting back. It wasn't like I was trying to ask for the break or I was trying to grab. I was trying to like dog just because I was hurt, but I was fine mentally. Like, see, I'm fighting back. I'm not trying to hug. I was just fighting. Because I knew this was my chance to catch him. As he's throwing, I could catch him too. So again, boxing's a risk. So I was down to take the risk. So even while you were like rocked or something, like when you feel that feeling, you're still like thinking. Oh yeah, your mind's still conscious of like what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Because once I had my legs under me, I was like, I'm still hurt, but I'm okay. Like I can still fire back. Like I could probably like hurt him too. And I turned southpaw. I'm still mugging him at the end of the round like that. <laughs> nah, I still wanted it. You, you, I, I knew I still wanted to fight. I wanted to win. That was a big round. That was a big, a big shift in momentum that round, I feel. Now I feel I was down. I needed to like do something more. For sure, I didn't feel I was winning anymore. Because, yeah... All it takes is one punch, one round. Yeah, and Bell's very perfect. His posture's very, like, like he's the same. It's weird. Like, he, yeah, so that's a trip, too. I think it's not really about having, like, I'm hearing the commentators not having a, it's not that you don't have a plan B, a plan C, is it? You have a plan A, and when things change with plan A, you got to like adapt and like maneuver your way. There's not really like a plan B. I know what they mean by plan B, but I feel like it's all situational, bro. It all depends. For example, I got hurt that round. You're not going to go to plan B. Now you're going to try to like win the fight. Like who cares about plan B? You're going to, you got to find a way to land punches and like hurt this guy too. You got to get it back. That was a nice punch bell landed. Yeah, I feel that's one thing Bill could have did too, though. He could have maybe worked my body more and set more punches up. I think he would have had more success with me. Just because when you punch someone down, you open a lot of stairs. Yeah, but again, Bell's a waiter. He was just waiting on me, waiting on me. Like, It's not like he had a, a an initiative to like do more. He was just trying to do off the energy I was feeding him. That's what I noticed when I fought him. Hey, so even right here, before I press play, if you guys notice, look at Albert Bell's arm. Like, he hangs it down by his knees so long, and then from there, he was jabbing, like, upwards. But, like, he was so long-armed. It was like, you had to be conscious of his of his punches coming at me. Like, and one thing he had was, like, a good jab. And as a fighter, that's all you need is a good jab, and you could do a lot. You could hold a lot of fighters off with that. Here we go. It's the eighth round. is about to end. Yeah, see that left hand? He would shoot even hooks from down below. It's two rounds. It's the ninth round. I knew the end was coming, bro. I felt fine. I just felt um, felt I need. I still needed to do more. I wasn't doing enough. I did feel these last two rounds were super important. Me being the champion and me holding the belt. See, the referee was saying hands free, hands free. And they warned him to let him go right there. He told me to let him go. Well, he told Bell, let him go, let him go. And I know what Timothy Bradley was saying, I need to go to inside, but when I get inside, I'm being hugged, bro. And then we're getting separated again, and then I'm having to get inside. And so I was trying to fight like at a mid-range so that I could land punches and not get hugged. Like, you 
Nice. There's the right hand. There's the mouthpiece. So this is this is what the start of it. So his mouthpiece came out. See, this is what I didn't agree with because his mouthpiece came out, but like in boxing, when the action is going on, they're not supposed to like intervene until there's like a calmness in the fight. Then you could say like time. So that's why I was like, what the fuck? So it's all good. It came out. So looking back, I was like, what the hell? Whatever. Yeah. See, even the commentators were talking about it. You can't cause a break in the action just because the mouthpiece because we're, we're still fighting. Hey, but I feel I landed the shots there. His mouthpiece came out. Another one. This is a very important round for me. A very pivotal point, Phil. The hook. Little jabs he was throwing, but I wasn't tripping. I was looking for bigger shots. There's a the left hook again. See, I was working the body. I wasn't trying to smother myself though. See, he was trying to hug right there. I wasn't trying to like get too close because I already knew he was gonna hug me and then it's a break. But, but I did believe I was winning this round. See, there goes the hug. This is what I'm talking about. That's it, ninth round. I felt I won the ninth round. So I have the uh I believe I have, I'm gonna show, I'll be able to show you guys. I believe I have the scorecard of the judges that scored the fight. And I think a lot of the judges had me losing like the last two rounds. So I was like, what the hell? Like, that didn't make sense to me. But. And then I felt he already warned him for the mouthpiece coming out. Yeah, I was stalking. I felt him getting tired for sure. I felt him wearing down. See, and there he goes hugging. I was like, damn. I knew he was tired. See, and then this. Look, the mouthpiece again. I think that's what irritated me. Looking, I was like, come on, bro. That's a tactic. That's hella crafty. Hell yeah. That's smart. I don't even think I could take my mouthpiece out. I don't know what kind of mouthpiece these people have to be able to spit it out. That's crazy. It's halfway through the round. Minute 20 left. Oh! Hey, I was like, fuck it. I'm going duck his head. I'm taking whatever I can. This is the last round, last moment, so I didn't care. Yeah, see, like they said, he leans down. Right? Come on. Oh, he caught me there. I was like, I was good. I was fine already. I think I got hurt. Once I got hurt, the round by Bell after that. Yeah, I was, I was a little hurt, but I felt fine mentally. That was good. We come with the 30 second mark. Oh! Oh! And there I had him, I had him. I definitely feel 12 rounds would have suited me for this fight. Definitely would have. Yeah, it was a great fight, it was a good fight. And it was hugging, yeah. Yeah, it was a good fight, I just didn't feel Albert Bell did enough to take the title, but I mean, that's fine. I, I accept my losses. I accept my wins. I mean, it's all good. But I just don't understand how a lot of the judges had me losing the last two rounds. But it was a good fight. It was a good fight. First time I fought a guy that was so tall, 6 and all. It was No experience. It was cool. Yeah, 97, 90. So when I heard 97, 93, I was like, that's me. Yeah, when I heard 97, 93, I was like, oh, okay, for sure, like, I probably won. But then when they said him, I was like, okay, he won, but like, damn, 97, 93, I was like, damn, that's a that lot. That's, yeah, I was like, damn, that should be hella closer. That was a little too much, but his boxing.
Shit happens. <laughs>